What an incredible day. It's absolutely beautiful. But the first thing that we've got on the list to do is to mow and strim and do all of that. And nobody wants to see that. It's terribly boring. So we're gonna get that done first thing up here before we start walking on the paths up and down and then squash all the grass down. Let's get that done first. So the next time you see me, I'll probably be very hot and sweaty. Um, but then we're gonna get on with some proper sweaty much yes but let me show you the beauty of a freshly mown path situation does that not look magnificent oh mum's just emerging from the polytunnel is it hot in there <laughs> yeah so basically everything in life looks better when your grass paths have been perfectly mowed and strimmed yeah <laughs> So now that first bit is out of the way, which was something that just uh, needed doing desperately, uh, on to the rest of the things on the list, and it's a big list. remember down behind the greenhouse where I made like the L-shaped kind of fence at the bottom there well we had a big gap on one end because I only had four pallets anyway this chap I'm hoping is just going to fit right in that space so I'm going to pull out the cold frame that I've got behind there and the potatoes get everything out of the way try and get this one in there and that will really help stabilize it so it's pretty strong obviously L-shape is <laughs> is quite strong and also I've got all that wood in there and we've had really high winds recently and it's stayed up fine but I just feel better when I've got like that bit. So it's joined up both ends to the actual fence for the allotment. So I'm gonna try and get that done first. Okay, did I bring the drill? Yes, I did bring the drill. I was just suddenly thinking maybe I left it at home, but I didn't, it's all good, right. It's 
quite a big palette this one Okay, that has finished off the pallet fence. Just move the potatoes back and we're good. Yeah, so soak the poly is also on the list, uh, which isn't a very uh, active job, but we've just put the hose in the poly tunnel because we've got some things in the greenhouse which could really do with going out in there. It's not like the stuff which is gonna be in there over summer. It's not the tomatoes or anything uh, like that. It is just, we've got a load of lettuces that are planted really thickly and we're gonna put some in a bed and cover them with a cloche and we're gonna put some in the poly tunnel because uh, then we'll just eat them before we gotta get the tomatoes in. Um, but yeah, the poly tunnel is absolutely bone dry. Um, let me get, to, actually just, rather than me try and explain, let me just take you in there. <laughs> so yeah, the poly tunnel, and we have this problem every year. We find it really difficult to water in here. And as you can see, got the hose on, we're just trying to absolutely soak it. Look at the beauty of that chard. <laughs> when I first opened this up this morning, this was so wilted. It was really, really hot. I mean, it was 42.4 degrees in here. But yeah, so we have this problem in here every year where the ground just absolutely dries out. I mean, this is gonna be slightly different, I'm hoping, because before we had compost in here, you know, like bagged, um, like multi-purpose compost is, is what we'd fill these beds with. And um, once compost dries out, it's really, really difficult to get it to be properly wet again. And that's what kept happening in here. So we're watering and watering and watering. And then you move the soil and like underneath, like one centimeter down, it's still bone dry. Last year, I put loads and loads of effort into really soaking it. I dug it all over, or not dug it over, but like had the fork and, you know, made a lot of holes and then we saturated it in here, but we still had the same problem in the middle of summer. And yeah, it's just absolutely bone dry in here, but we've done a couple of things. So first thing we've done is we filled it a lot with our own compost in here, rather than like uh, multi-purpose compost. It's like our, so basically soil rather than uh, potting compost. And I'm going to put a watering system in here. Now it makes it sound fancier than it is. It's just going to be a leaky hose so that when we um, attach it to either the water butt or to the hose itself, the whole lot gets watered at once. And hopefully we'll be able to keep it a little bit more, uh, less barren, more than more, less barren. Yeah, so like this has been soaking on here for absolutely ages. But if you go down, can you see how it's just like bone dry underneath? So yeah, we've got to get it into a really good uh, damp state. Once it's damp, you see, then it takes on water absolutely fine, but it's just getting it damp to begin with. Um, 
is the issue anyway look at that isn't it gorgeous this is the red leaf chicory so pretty i mean it's in we don't really need it in here it was self-seeded and it's gonna have to go when we get the tomatoes in but still it's beautiful while it lasts boy it's warm okay next on that list was clearing some beds and we have got three beds that we're going to clear this is the first bed sorry i've just got a load of uh, bits and pieces on here but we have got the lamb's lettuce that's gone to seed at that end and the rest of it is pretty much empty. It's got a lot of um, the self-seeded chimney wrapper in here, but we're actually not going to keep any of that because we bought new seed and we don't want it to grow in the same bed again. So um, we're just going to hoe all of that out and then mulch this bed over. And then we have got just behind the tulips, we've got the turnips from last year in there that we're going to take out and mulch that bed as well. So yeah. That is two beds that will be ready to go. Um, oh, the other bed that I was going to know there was, I know I said there was three beds. The other bed that I'm going to clear is the one that had the brassica cage on it before. So that is this bed that has the very sad dead nine stars in it. And also the infested tree cabbage. Look at that. Absolutely chocker. <laughs> um, so I'm going to chop all of this down. I'm going to chop the uh, nine star down that haven't done anything. But I'm going to leave these, obviously, which are the um, offshoots that have kind of survived and come from the bottom. And look at this. I mean, it's only small, but it is actually a nine star cauliflower coming in there. So all is not lost. Oh, no. Got the blooming aphids on here, too. I'll have to give that a good old clean off. But yeah, so this bed is the third bed that's being cleared. And while I'm doing that, mum is very diligently going through our wildflower patch, pulling out the things which are definitely weeds, which is a thankless task. <laughs> yeah, but loads of stuff's coming up, so it's gonna look amazing in here in a month or so, which is exciting. But yeah, so on to clearing the beds. This is the bed that had the lamb's lettuce in it, which, like I said, has gone to seed. That is all going to come out. I'm just going to rip it out. It's going to go into the compost bin, even though it, uh, say it's gone to seed. It's actually only just started flowering, so it hasn't produced any seed. So by putting this in the compost, I'm not uh, condemning myself to years of lamb's lettuce cropping up in the beds all the time. So hopefully I've caught it early enough. But if not, there are worse things to be lacing your compost with than lamb's lettuce seed. In fact, we've got worse in there already. So <laughs> even if I do get a bit cropping up, I'm not too worried about that. Then once I've got this big stuff cleared out the bed, I will just hoe off what else is growing in here and then mulch the whole bed with well-rotted horse manure. And then it's prepped and ready to go. actually on the list this morning but we've been meaning to do is to check out what's going on under here in the dahlia bed we think we've lost most of them to the real cold that we had this winter but we're planning to move them out of this bed anyway so we really need to dig them up check what's what what's good and then move them out of the bed okay, so some of it's definitely still alive yeah so let's take all the things for Yeah, I think we will just to check. But look, Mum, this one's. It's really green. Well, it's growing. It's huge. Oh, 
Yeah, so we'll get that growing again. We originally decided to take this bed out of rotation because it was absolutely riddled with club root, which is the one that affects the brassicas. It also had white rot, which is the one that affects the allium family. So we decided we'd just put it over to a load of dahlias and a load of tulips, and we'd just have it as a bit of a flower cutting bed. In colder, damper areas than here, you do have to dig dahlias up because they rot out in the ground, but we don't normally get below about minus three, and we're on really sandy soil, so it's not normally a problem. However, last year, we got down to minus eight so I think these dahlias have really suffered but it's an opportunity to dig them all up see what we can and can't save and we're going to move them out of this bed and bring this bed back into rotation and spread the dahlias out across the plot a bit yeah I was thinking those two beds I'm clearing they're not going to be ready to go for um, a while because we need the mulch to settle right, okay. but there's plenty of other spots we can put things okay. are you Chicken, assessing my no? oh this is difficult I'm I'm sitting in the swinging chair, sorry, and I'm trying to spin round so we can see the board. <laughs> <laughs> Swing seats don't make a very good um, camera stand. Oh, it's oh God, bang crash, bang crash. Look at this. We now have four girls who all get on perfectly well. Hey, girlies, don't you? Yes. Well, they've all scattered now I've got the camera out, but... <laughs> hey, Rue Ru is still leader of the pack. And what's really funny is I actually think that Margot uh, isn't the bottom. I think poor old Flo is back at the bottom again. But I don't know. There's still a bit of a tussle between them. But they're not being aggressive at all anymore. They're all just getting on with it, which is lovely. Hey, girlies. Is it lovely? Hey, girlies. Is it? Are you sausage? <laughs> Mum is on coffee duty, which is excellent because we have a lot of daily discussions to get underway. Oh, look, there's bees all over this apple blossom at the moment. Well, yeah. So that's just one. Yeah, one eyed Jill. Now I know I bought that one. That's not as many as I thought in here. So we've got one. That's the one, will it? Yep, two. Two, we've got three. As well as whatever we save out of the beds, uh, we've also got a couple that are ready to go into the new ones. Two of them came from Johanna for my birthday, which are singles, which I'm pretty excited about. And also I picked up one called Wine Eyed Jill from Wilco's, I think it was, Bargain. But it's a big like multicoloured pom-pom. And along with whatever we rescue out of the bed, we're going to kind of dot them across the plot. Can I put them back in here or... Right, coffee finished, back to it. So the second bed that I'm clearing is the one that had our turnips in from last year. They've been in the bed all over winter. We had been picking them, but obviously as soon as the weather's got warm, they've shot up and started flowering. But the flowering tops that they produce is basically a crude form of chimida wrapper, so we've been eating them merrily. I actually thought most of these had gone over, so once they really start flowering and they've gone too far, I can see that there's loads of really tight buds quite low down, so I'm going to pick off what I can from here for eating before clearing and chucking the rest straight into the compost heap. I'm multitasking here, but as we're doing this, Mum and I are trying to remember what all the different dahlias were in the bed. And it's proving quite tricky. Yeah, it's tall, something. Pink? Didn't, we didn't have any pink. Oh, okay. We had purple. Yeah, we had like a dark purple in the middle. But Instagram has been consulted <laughs> from last year. And that one in the middle was this one. So luckily, a bit of that has survived. So we're gonna get that in along the edge of the bed. Excellent, probably the bed that I've just cleared actually.
that we've just picked done, which, which is which are, what just on I the end with, there. Are there, and one new one. Okay. So this chap is one of the singles from Johanna, already started growing. I find it amazing when they're just in a plastic bag and dry as old bones. They just start growing. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, these two are going at the end of this bed. So this is going to be one of the rescues from the old bed, which I think is the big orange pom-pom, and then this happy single. Planting them much deeper this time. Part of the issue we have with the sandy soil is that over the winter and when you're watering, the soil really does just wash away. So the dahlias in the old bed, they'd actually become quite exposed at the top, which obviously also didn't help with the cold weather. They were just completely exposed. They may have had a better chance of survival if we had mulched the bed, but we didn't. So we live with our choices. But anyway, I'm planting them much deeper this time so that their stem is just below the surface and all the tubers are completely underground. So normally, I'm quite funny about keeping flowers out of like the general veg rotation raised beds that we've got on the plot. But somehow dahlias kind of sneak in as a crop for me because we grow them really for cut flower, although they look magnificent on the plot. They're one of the few flowers that I'm really happy to just keep cutting because they produce more and more the more you cut. I feel very comfortable cutting them. It's not like a tulip. I can't cut the tulips because <laughs> they just produce the one flower. I can't do it. But dahlias, I kind of think of them more as a crop. So I'm quite happy to have them spread across the real like production beds of the allotment. I'm all right with that. And I think it's going to look gorgeous. And while I am in a bed clearing frenzy, I'm going to take out the half of this American crest that I'm not keeping for saved seed. So I chopped all this down and we've had another feed from it. The other half of the bed where I've left it grow really tall, that's the side that I'm leaving for seed. So I'll collect that when it's fully dry and we will be using that for the next crop. But this lot is all ready to go. Chuck it straight in the compost heap. Whew, ruthless today. Mm. Mm. Much different. The other one was black. This totally one's totally black. Orange one. We haven't, haven't done any of these things, Mum. We haven't planted out the lettuce, or the tree spinach, or the radicchio, or the beetroot, and we haven't sown the chickpeas. That was a lot of things we were supposed to be doing. Are um... you right, girlies? Are you pretty well kicked? Pretty well gigs, pretty well gigs, pretty well gigs, pretty well gigs, pretty well gigs. I know, Rube. They're beautiful. How gorgeous. Gorgeous. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it really has been an absolutely spectacular day. So it's going to be grey tomorrow, which is a bit fun. So that's what the weather forecast says. Whether it actually works out that way or not is, you know, by the by. <laughs> anyway, it's been a wonderful day. Now all we've got to do is do a bit of picking. We've got beetroot to pick. We've got asparagus to pick. We're going to take some leeks home with us. We've got the turnip tops. I think we've already got Cavalinero at home, so we'll leave that. But um, yeah, quite a lot of bits and pieces to take with us. <laughs> Sorry, Bob's trying to get the lawnmower in the netting shed, but I've thrown all the cushions in there, so it's not so easy. Anyway, right, picking and then tidy and then home. What a beautiful day. What a wonderful day. I cannot wait until all the days are like this. Sorry, I'm just looking. I've just, I've just picked a load of um, the last of the flowering sprouts off the uh, tree cabbage that we moved. And I'll give them to the girls in the, in the house. Oh, the helicopter's back. I'm going to try and speak over it. <laughs> but it's just an absolute joy to see all four girls just like getting on with it. They're all eating out of the same like holder that's got the, the sprouts in. Nobody's trying to murder each other. They're really happy. Hey, girlies. Yeah, it's really it's lovely to see. Just like harmony. It's perfect. Right. Leeks asparagus, beetroot, maybe some chard. Look, 
Look at them fatties. Oh, they gorgeous. Mm, mm, mm. Get them in the basket. We've got some parsley too. We've got the turnip pots in there ready to go. Oh, and uh, one spring onion that I found in the bed <laughs> with the turnips. That'll do. So these are the beetroot that uh, I'm going to take out today. They're starting to bolt. You can see the central stem has got really fat. So they definitely, definitely need to come out because they will get very woody right in the middle of the beetroot. But yeah, some of these are fairly decent size and they've been in all winter. So I'm just gonna take, take some of these out. You can see like, if this wasn't basically the end of the season and they're all bolting, those two growing together, this one I would twist out, leave that one in and then that one would get bigger. But obviously it's the end of the season and we're not doing that now. We're just, we are just taking them. But yeah, pretty pleased that we're still picking beetroot I would normally like pull off the foliage, put that in the compost bin and then just take the actual beetroot home rather than having to bring it back. But some of this on here looks really good and we're probably gonna have it in a salad tonight, but I'm not gonna pick it all off and sort through it now because we are ready to go home. So I'm just gonna take the whole lot and then I'll sort through it when I get back. But yeah, the beetroot leaves, as long as they're not the really big fat gnarly ones, they make excellent salad. Lily, why are you sitting on the on the radish? You're sitting on the radish, girlie. Off you go. Look. Oh. Put your fat furry bum on there. Make that big one in the middle because that's the centre. We're about to go this one, that one, and with that one, we've got a flower on it. That's really good. Beauty, it's got a big flower stalk, so we'll have to have the centre though. Yeah. This one hasn't done yet. Not yet.
some food front. Yes, yes, yes. Everything's good. <laughs> afternoon the weather forecast did not lie it has been grey and pretty wet actually most of the day but I have got these herbs that I'm gonna actually plant in the back garden so I've got some big plans for the back garden this year um, I want to get more of the stuff which I just want to pick and use in the kitchen so like herbs that kind of thing maybe some lettuce some salad stuff growing in the back garden because we never use the back garden for edible stuff I've got one huge blueberry bush out there that we never get any blueberries off <laughs> it's in a pot next to the shed so i might even try and protect that this year but basically i've got these to pot up in the back garden we've got loads and loads of empty pots because unfortunately we lost a lot of stuff over the winter this year but yeah so last week's vlog uh, went on for absolutely ages i don't know what happened but it just seemed to go on for ages and so i had to cut loads of stuff out of it and one of the things that i had to cut out of it was me picking up these herbs and I went somewhere particularly special and beautiful and found these. So we're going to go there now. <laughs> There's a quick detour at the end of this week. So this was last week I did this and while you're doing that I'm going to pop these up and, um, and I'll see you for a cheers in a minute. Good morning, good morning. We are on our way somewhere very exciting because we're going to one of my favourite little gardens in London because it is the spring open day of the Chelsea Physic Garden. And the Chelsea Physic Garden is a hidden gem if ever there was one. Um, so this year I'm determined I'm going to come here more often. This is obviously it's quite early in the year so things are going to be uh, not in full flow so we'll see it now and I'm determined we are going to go back repeatedly this year and see what they've got growing there because it is a beautiful little garden, like I say, and it's a really interesting one. It was started in 1670 something, uh, early 1670s. <laughs> when I get there and I look at the sign on the wall, I will be able to tell you exactly when. Um, but it was started by the apothecaries of London. Sneak peek through the windows. Oh, there you go, uh, 1673, 1673. But there you go, look at that little joy, little joy. Okay, well, firstly, I've never seen it this busy, <laughs> but it's the spring open day, so they've got it done out like a marketplace. It's not normally like this. It's normally just an open garden. But yeah, I'm glad to see that there's so many people here and there's some quite interesting little stands. But yeah, this garden, it was started by the apothecaries of London to collect plants and also to teach their apprentices, who were going to be the next wave of apothecaries, which plants did what, which plants could cure people and heal people and which ones would just kill you outright <laughs> which is quite an important thing to know if you're an apothecary and it's a bit like how Kew Gardens used to be where every little plant has got a label on it but it's a magical little place and it's right on the banks of the Thames and they used to I mean back in like the 1700s they were like the epicenter of bringing in exciting new species from around the world and so being right on the Thames you know these incredible new plants would come up the Thames in the boats they'd be unloaded into the Chelsea Physic Garden I just think it's magical it's absolutely magical and like I say it is their spring open day so that chaps is why we're here currently just having a bit of a stroll through the fernery which is lovely oh sorry the cool fernery there's just so many gems, that's what I love. I mean, you could just spend hours in here. It's a really quite small patch of ground. It's a little walled garden, but there is so much to look at. God, these are the colours on some of these ferns. It's outrageous. I don't know if that's coming through on the camera, but that is pink, proper pink. And look at this. Look at the stripes on that. Is that not a joy? Actually, I love ferns anyway, to be honest. So this is always going to be... <laughs> This is always going to be exciting. But this is so lovely. Actually, I've never been in here with so many people. It's quite weird. But there's about every sort of form of leaf type you could get. Look at this one. It's like it's been tied in little knots, like a friendship bracelet. 
And then there is this glass box, which I guess is the hot fernery, as opposed to the cool one. I don't know if you can see in there, but yeah, it's just like a dripping jungle paradise in there. Beautiful, no, we're just getting glass reflections mainly now, aren't we? Yes. So around the back of the garden is all kind of like a woodland garden. So this is outside, it's still a lot of ferns, <laughs> but it's not in the fernery. But I guess that's because a lot of the traditional uh, healing herbs from the British Isles were woodland plants. But there's some absolutely wild specimens in here. I mean, look at the size of this. If I just put my hand next to it for context, look at the size of that. It's absolutely a ginormous. Yeah, it's just basically you could spend hours in here. But let me walk you round out of this woodland bit. Oh, look, all the bluebells are going. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Got yellow lamium. There's also all these bits that I'm just desperate to go and have a nose around, like they're greenhouses at the back there. Like you can't go through there, but <laughs> I've wanted to go and have a nose around in there for a long time. This is completely by the by. I don't know if it's got any medical use, but this is an Iphian, right? And it's the, it's the only plant that I know that has a variety called Jesse. So I've got a particular little affinity to Iphions. So sweet. And as well as like me talking about, they've got this huge history behind them. They're still doing a lot of stuff like that's relevant for the future. And they do so much research here particularly, like I say, with medicinal plants, but edible plants as well. And this was the first place that I really heard about food forests, actually. Uh, obviously, everything's a bit low in the ground at the moment because of the time of year, but this kind of really comes to life later on. So hopefully I'll be able to show you that. Particularly beautiful little cloches. God, aren't they lovely? God, I love some of them. Wow, I bet they weigh a ton though. We've got elderberries here. Wow, this is so far ahead of mine. This is already forming flowers and fruit. Wowzers passion fruit, oh, okra. Now this is something I do not know, a wild Galapagos tomato. <laughs> Selenium cheese manii. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing at that, that's really childish. But still, cheese manii is a great name. Now this here, strawberry spinach, I think this is what I call tree spinach. Oh, Japanese wine berry. This is something I've been eyeing up for ages. Anybody get an experience with it? Because I've heard it's outstanding. No garden is complete without a border of chard. <laughs> oh, look, and broad beans. God, their broad beans look huge. They must have survived the winter. Perpetual spinach chard there, looking gorgeous with onions at the front. And then traditional spinach in front of the chard. They also have lots of like informative signage around, <laughs> which I don't know if you know at Kew, there is a herb garden at Kew that has a couple of kind of quite interesting bits and pieces, but nothing as detailed as they go into here. I mean, look at this. It's all about the B vitamins. And this, look at this, I didn't even realise this is how they grew. Obviously, I know that pine nuts are from a pine, but how spectacular is that? <laughs> That's really pink. Beautiful. But going up into the other part of the garden, they have got a lot of trial beds up there where they do a lot of experimentation and where they do a lot of the trials. But at the moment, there's pretty much nothing in there. So let's go and have a look at the plant stands. Oh, epimedium, that is one of my favourite. I used to have a collection of epimediums in the back garden. But unfortunately, the vine weevil got to them, which was a bit depressing. But yeah, I've got to be careful here because I've got to carry these if I buy anything. <laughs> when I say if I buy something, I mean I have to choose small things to buy. And I think I might have found my stand. I'm thinking about putting a load of herbs in the back garden this year so that they're a bit more easy access. And I have found myself a sixth hole tray, which I'm now going to fill.
sun came out. Cheers, chaps. Got my herbs in. Wasn't Chelsea Physic Garden absolutely beautiful? We're gonna have to go back there repeatedly throughout the year so I can show you what they're actually up to. Because a lot of the beds, that's like the main section of that garden is like all these really regimented trial beds and obviously there's nothing in there at the moment. So we'll go back, we'll go back. We also need to go back to Kew to have a look what they're doing in their vegetable garden. See how far behind we all are. <laughs> actually, to be honest, I was on the 65 bus, which is a double decker bus that goes past the edge of Kew the other day. I'm on that bus a lot. <laughs> you can see straight over into the vegetable garden because it's on that side and they don't look like they're up to much. So I think we're doing all right, chaps. We're doing all right. But yeah, it is now Sunday evening and uh, tomorrow morning is May. It's the 1st of May and also it is the first day of National Gardening Week. It is also the Maybank holiday, so cheers to all of those things. And it's going to be really good weather next week. Oh, I'm hoping it's going to be sunny, but it's going to be in like the late teens, so like 18, 19 for most of the week and not getting below 10 in the evening. So all those things that I had on the blackboard this week that we didn't manage to do, which is mostly like planting stuff out, of which we have a lot of planting out to do. Um, yeah, it's all gonna be done next week. And <laughs> so not only uh, are we gonna be planting out next, we've got a lot of sowing to do as well. So we've got uh, some of the rarer things to do. So I've got Caucasian spinach to get in. I've got a chocha to get in, which is very exciting. Got two varieties of that this year. Um, I bought some Malbar spinach seed, but I've completely lost them. I'm sorry that you're wobbling around all over the place. I've um, I bought another tripod so I could have one at the allotment and one here so that I didn't have to keep tra you know, traipsing it backwards and forwards. But the one that I've bought, although it was the same price as the other one, it's a bit on the flimsy side. So you're kind of like this on top of a very flimsy pole at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might have to rethink buying another one of them. Mm. Well, what else? Yeah, so National Gardening Week. Oh, it's also World Naked Gardening Day. Uh, I think it might be Saturday next week, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> Instagram on that day is always fun. Hmm. So what else? I think that's about it, chaps. So I'm just going to say cheers. As always, it's going to be May when you watch this tomorrow, which is just nuts. I really feel like I haven't done all the things that I intended to do in April. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, we'll also do a seedling catch up next week because things are coming on at a great pace. So we do that. Yeah, basically chaps, it's going to be May. Cheers. Cheers to everybody in the Monday Club. You're all absolutely spectacular. I will not forget to put your names at the end of this video. That was pretty poor show last week. I'm terribly sorry about that. <laughs> Absolute amateur. Sorry about that. Your names will be appearing in a minute. And also cheers to everybody else. I hope you have had a very successful April and that May is going to be a blinder. Yes. Cheers, chaps. Oh, I've got hair in my mouth. <laughs> cheers, chaps.